Well, hi there, my YouTube audience. I've finally got here. We're going to take a look at what I'm going to call the Dyson Dark Side. In Aldi, a while back, I saw a vacuum cleaner that looked very similar to a Dyson vacuum cleaner I owned, and it had me very curious because, as some of you may know on YouTube, I love to look at knockoff things or things that are clones or things that are sort of similar. And it's sort of weird because there's all different variations of that theme. We'll take a look at some toys just to get a head around what I sort of classify as a direct knockoff versus like a clone. And we'll take a look at this vacuum cleaner and we'll just try and work out the features that it's missing versus the real McCoy Dyson vacuum cleaner. Let's do it! One of the first videos I did where I looked at a real toy versus a knockoff was simply called Thomas vs. Thomas. It's a very famous toy train that has some remarkable clones getting about. And what was very interesting about this is the clone Thomas actually has more detail and looks better than the real McCoy. But it wasn't until we started to look at inside and the way this is put together that we saw the dark side start to be revealed. Welcome to real Lego SpongeBob SquarePants. Please stand up. Oh, well, you both are standing up, aren't you? One of these is a real McCoy Lego SpongeBob. The other one's a fake one. And I think this really shows you just how clever some of the cloning that's going on is. Lego have got a massive huge problem with clone minifigures and things now it's amazing quality it's very inexpensive and it's a big big problem for lego so who's a lego expert out there which one's real which one's fake is the one with the closed mouth the fake or is the one with the open mouth the fake or are they both fake or are they both real you tell me you're the experts copy and clone products love to mimic the very popular things here are two minecraft swords one of these is real and one is fake. Can you tell by looking at the video here which one is which? And the person who sold me the fake one actually told me that it was real. Mind you, it was one third of the price and interestingly, they are both made in China. With knockoff toys, dark side toys, clone toys, so often the packaging is a real deception. Here are two classic cases, both of these are knockoffs. There's my little phony, but a young child would see that and they would think, wow, that's the real McCoy toy and that's what it's all about it's all about the trap the snare once a child gets its eyes on that and the parent sees a very inexpensive price the sale goes through and it's the same with this pepper pig here these are two great examples of packaging deception and it just shows you how much trouble the dark side goes to to fool the people purchasing these toys in particular to trap the child and yet there are other occasions where the packaging deception isn't very hard to tell of course there's the real barbie and what's sort of sad here this barbie here was only a few dollars more than this very very crummy fake barbie in here and that often makes me wonder why people even bother touching this sort of rubbish in the strangest way being knocked off sort of says you've made it it says you've made something really popular it says that you're really a big attraction even robo fish have been done over and there's a knockoff there and what's it called a happy fish and then there's the interesting conundrum where some people allow the dark side to basically make their empire much, much bigger. And I think Angry Birds is a perfect example of that. And who knows, Minecraft might be playing the same game. I'm yet to really work it out. Well, here are two very recent purchases. One of these toys is a real Optimus Prime, even though both were sold to me as real toys. I know one's a real toy because I know I paid $50 for this one here. That's a real Optimus Prime. It's the latest toy. At the time of making this video, there's a receipt from Kmart. What's very interesting here is this toy was sold to me as a real McCoy Hasbro toy. It was $15. $15 versus 50 Hmm. I bought this at the Dark Side Markets. I bought that at Kmart. Yet the person who sold me this was adamant it was a real McCoy toy. Point out to me, it has a Hasbro sign down there. Although I can't quite read it, this has bro. And I look over this box here, and I start to even query myself for saying, well, maybe this is, maybe this is something in another country, maybe this is something which hasn't, you know, landed in Australia. I'm going to need the Transformers fans to really tell me what's going on here. And now to one of the all time greatest deceptions that I've seen. One of these toys is a real toy, the other one's a fake one. One was $5. The other one was not far off $20. We'll look at the back packaging here. You're going to really struggle, aren't you? I'll tell you what, I think this is one of the, you know, classic all-time. I'm going to try and be as similar to the real McCoy product as I possibly can, and there would be many people who would be confused between those two. Oh, here's an interesting one. Here's a world-famous product. It's known by a single name. It's recognised by a certain style of packaging. 
But that doesn't stop other fakers coming in. This is a no pro in here. It's trying to emulate what the GoPro is doing. But hey, it doesn't stop there. Sony are trying it on as well. And they package their action cam in remarkably similar style to a GoPro because they're trying to leech onto the mojo the GoPro have. Okay, let's get into the meat of the sandwich in this video. There's that Aldi vacuum cleaner there. I'm calling it the Dyson clone, $46.99. There's the brochure. So I can just double check that's the price. It seems remarkably cheap and it does look like my Dyson. When I purchased my Dyson, and I think I've had this for nearly two years, I paid up around $700, but Dyson prices relax as the model gets older. It's now around $388. The model number has slightly changed. There it is there in the paper that I saw for sale now. They call it a DC-37 Origin bagless. Even though that's a DC-39, it's basically the same vacuum cleaner, and that's a pretty good price for what is an amazing cleaner. But the problem remains here is people will look at this and say, hang on a second, $388 for that, when I can go pick up something which sort of looks the same for $46.99, what's going on? What is exactly the difference between that there and that there? Well, here's my Dyson, bring it out to the table here. It's been through a renovation of their house and renovations tend to kill vacuum cleaners. It didn't kill this one. It's showing a bit of wear and tear on it now. If I look around, uh, it's interesting. Dyson actually sent me out one of their newer stick vacuums and that has almost replaced the need to have this one, which is almost remarkable to think of. But nevertheless, this is a class act, this machine. But I had to go through the pain of buying one to actually understand exactly what Dyson's all about. Well, I did go back and look at the unboxing video I did of my DC-39. And I should correct something here. I can put up the price I actually paid for it. It was actually $749. But remembering the price is relaxed to this now because it's an older model. These are Australian prices. That's the other very important thing to remember. Things in Australia tend to be fairly expensive. Dyson sent me out this vacuum cleaner. Uh, it was a freebie for me. Thank you, Dyson, again. Uh, the price I see, that's at Costco in Sydney. But then again, the prices could change. And the stock may run out because Costco can be like that. It's a stick vacuum cleaner. This machine is absolutely awesome. And what is interesting is this has almost taken over the chores that that bigger machine used to do. To me, what really defines a Dyson are these cyclones here. This is what does all the really nasty separation of dust particles and manages it so well. On the later models, there'll be stack ups of these cyclones here. But what we're going to investigate when we look at this one here is exactly what are these here. Are these cyclones or are these no clones? And Dyson do these lovely breakdowns on their product boxes and you can see the magic of the cyclones there. That's what does the dirty work. Here in Australia, Aldi is always an excellent place to pick up a nice inexpensive vacuum cleaner, if that's your style. That's normally the style that you'll see for sale. They've got a couple of different models going through, but I've only ever once seen this one here. And that's why I'm very curious. Now what's going to blow your mind here is, I did a video, which I'm not sure if you've seen yet, because I'm a little bit behind and a little bit staggered with my videos because I've had some troubles. I found this vacuum cleaner thrown out in the rubbish piles in front of people's houses, and it's only a year old. It had me very curious. I went up to the owner and said, hey, why did you throw out this vacuum cleaner? It's an Aldi one. I'm pretty sure it's the same as what's in the box there behind there. I said, how come did you throw this out? And he said, well, you do a bit of vacuuming of this and it stops sucking. And I think that's the biggest problem with these vacuum cleaners. You go in and you think, wow, there's a really cheap vacuum cleaner. But in the end, all they do is nothing but disappoint you. Well, okay, let's come in and unbox this beautiful Aldi vacuum cleaner, which looks very similar to my beautiful Dyson. And you know what? I am a person who is a glutton for punishment. If I see something, you know, which is well priced, it's my curiosity which will come along and end up buying it. Let's take a look inside the box there. It's nicely packaged, isn't it? There's the hose, which feels like you get on the cheap and nasty vacuum cleaner. There's a bit of pipe. Here it comes. Ooh. I like its colors. Look at that. Quite curious, isn't it? We'll take a look at the button positioning and things on that vacuum cleaner versus my Dyson. There's the head. Heads tend to be very much the letdown in these machines, as I've found in the past. And there's the warranty thing. I've got a one year warranty with this beast. And as I remember, when these appeared in Aldi, these sold really well. In fact, whenever they've got their little inexpensive vacuum cleaners in the stores, 
they always sell well out. Some similarities here to my Dyson, I can tell you, which is very curious. Um, but we'll take a look at exactly where things are different and where things are similar. It's actually quite a nice looking machine. I like the fact that it's orange and black. It's quite impressive looking, nice and compact. Um, yeah, they'll stick it together and give it a spin. Well, attached to the top of this cleaner is a quick start guide here. It's a bit of a run through of how bits and bobs attach to it and come apart. And it's talking about the features that this vacuum cleaner has got. Okay, well, let's take a bit of a look at what's going on here. I mean, to me, I look at that there and then I slide the camera over here. I can see lots of little strange similarities. Look at the angle of the dust collection bin here. I won't change the angle of the camera. They're the same angle. The whole ball feel at the back there has been emulated here, although this ball's a fake ball. All this ball is is uh, well, just got wheels underneath, so it doesn't actually run as a ball. Just looking at the handle area and the fact that the hose clips on down the back there behind the vacuum cleaner, we'll come to the Aldi one here. Looks the same, doesn't it? There's a handle there. The handle goes right down the back of the machine. And also the hose clips on the back there. Let's take a look at the area where the hose connects onto my Dyson here. And this area steers. It stops the machine from falling over. It's actually very stable. Let's take a look at the Aldi one here. Down to the same area. The hose comes out the same spot, but it doesn't steer. All it's got relying for the moving around is a little wheel under there that spins when you pull in a certain direction. Just looking over the rear end of these cleaners now. First look at the Dyson here. This is the power here, the power button. This is the retractor cable, and this button here releases the dust collection area. Also noting that the exhaust of the motor is here. Let's go over the clone. The exhaust of the motor is also here. Going up here, the button is on the other side to retract the cable. That's the power button here, and to release the dust is here. And it's got also a thing that basically low power, high power, but you're always going to have this thing up on high power, aren't you? Okay, let's take a look at the dust collection area here on the Dyson. It releases from a button here. There is the fine filter here, which you wash with water. It doesn't get clogged up like you will see on other vacuum cleaners because the way Dyson's manage the fine dust is very differently. This is the area where the dirt and everything comes in from the floor. That's the area there where it gets sucked in. There's always good seals on these, really good rubber seals. And at the top here is where the air, the air which has been through the filter, ends up being sucked up there and goes down through the motor and exits the back of the machine. Okay, let's take a look at the little clone here. There's the button to release that dust collection area. A little bit nafty. It's interesting, the same sort of area where the dirt comes in to this. It's sucking up from the floor, going through there, into the hole there. It comes out the top here. That's the return back to the motor there, where the motor's doing all the sucking at the back. And of course, the air is being pumped out the back, just like the Dyson. Well, let's take a look at what arguably is the most important part of a vacuum cleaner, and that's the area where the dust gets managed and collected. Let's take a look at the Dyson first. There's a little button here that releases the bottom of the dust collection area, like that. And if you look up in the inside there, you'll find on these machines the really fine dust gets managed by the cyclones and collects in the middle here. The larger particles of dust and dirt collect on the outside. And that is Dyson's strength, is the way that it manages the really fine dust. It's also got excellent dust seals on these machines. And also, you don't get clogging up with this filter up here on these machines at all. In fact, I think I've only washed that filter out once. Uh, in fact, it's one of those filters that you just, you know, I think it probably does get dirty, but it's very hard to notice. Um, but you're not getting, you know, a clog up there which stops suction. That's what Dyson's all about. You don't lose suction with these machines. Let's take a look at what's going on in this little cloner here. Well, it's a smaller scale, of course. Down the bottom here is a release here to, to get that open. And I mean, I can just tell by the feel of this. Well, it's, you know, it is what it is. What is it, a $46.99, $47 machine? Can I see any fancy cyclones up there? Nah. And I'll tell you what's gonna happen on these machines is that really fine dust ends up going up here. Even though we're looking at these shapes here, you're thinking, well, aren't they cyclones, Leo? No, I don't think so. Oh, well, fancy that. We're looking at one of those filters that gets clogged really easily. And as I found out from the man who left that Aldi machine on the side of the road, when I picked it up, this thing was just chock-a-block. I suppose that's the first little foam filter, isn't it? And then you've got this other paper filter. That's the really fine particle dust filter, but these get blocked and clogged really easily. But what I can't see in here, is anything 
you know, that manages the really fine dust and stops the filters from getting clogged and blocked. And that's the big difference between this machine here and that machine there. I think the big thing that people struggle with, and I certainly did until I owned a Dyson, is, well, what really is the difference here? Well, I can tell you, if I came to your home with my Dysons, and I'd say to you, well, go and vacuum your home, and I'll come along and then I'll clean up with one of these, I'll be picking up dust that you never thought could be picked up. That's the difference and how these work so well. I know for a fact that these machines here, you know, they're built to a price. They're built to basically, I would just say, snare people. Maybe that's a bit of a nasty word, but for the fact that this has got a bit of that Dyson Mojo look, to me is a little bit nasty because I know for a fact that this is not going to manage dust anywhere near as good as what this machine here does. And to get on to the other very important aspect to a cleaner, and of course, that is the heads. And this is the weakest link, I feel, with the cheap vacuum cleaners. I've never been satisfied with a head from a cheap cleaner. Uh, they tend to have really poor connections. They tend to be very clumsy in the way they work on the ground. These little wheels you know, so easily seem to break off. That's my experience with playing with these. You've got to use your foot here to change from being on a carpet versus a lino floor whereas Dyson have got this beautiful system it's automatically it automatically changes between timber or lino or carpet um, it's just a dream system um, it looks fairly elaborate but it's not clogging up with dirt or anything it hasn't played up at all it just works I think that little lever there is part of the magic and it's funny when I sort of first saw that I thought wow it seems so elaborate and so in a sense over complicated but it makes the cleaning of your home so much more efficient well I'm going to come in and do the rag suck thing that I do on these cleaners I'll do the Dyson and then I'll come along and do the other one let's strike up the Dyson here we go oh okay you can see it's really grab hold of that nothing to get it back out Okay. Let's go over to the cloner. It's on full power. Well, it's certainly not doing what the Dyson did. I'm starting to see what you're paying for now, I hope. Come on. I can't even pick the head up with that. It's not even getting caught enough to pick up the head. Oh, there we go. Oh, I've got it. Yeah, okay. Look at the Dyson once more. Oh. Now look at that. Oh, it's gone. It's gone. Somewhere up there. Damn. Well, I've pulled down my Dyson. I'm looking for my rag. It's somewhere in here. It's not in the head area. And I don't think it's made it to this area here, the dust collection area. Or should I call it the rag collection area? Oh, there it is there. It's back. It's been Dysoned. And maybe another weirder little test is if I put the Dyson up, got the hose off it, there's the air suction area there. And it's at the same height as this Aldi one here, little cloner. And I'll turn them on and I'll come on and see which one wants to suck the rag. It'll be like the suck off of the cleaners. I'll turn both of them on. Okay, there's a bit of a strange one. Who's going to suck it? Let's see. Whoa, the suck off here. But it looks like Dyson's got it. Who's going to win here? Who's got more of the rag? Is it a girl? Is that point up here? Oh, no. Come on. Who's got more here? It's a suck off of the century. I think Dyson's won that one. What do you reckon? Who's got more there? Yeah, I'd say Dyson's got it. Okay, let's do one more. Let's do the top of the rag. Here we go. Oh, that boat. Maybe they go. Who's going to be the winner? Oh, they're quiet. They're quiet. Oh. I'd say that's almost the time. I don't know. Oh, there's a winner. Let's suck it. Let's get it. Oh no, what's going on here? Ah. Oh, it's like the little one's got it. Oh, and 
And I know you'll say, well, Leo, the Dyson's not sucking that rag right up into the guts bit. And the reason is, is it's got a bit of a safety feature on it. That if you go to block it off, you'll hear there's a bypass valve. And that protects the motor from getting burned out if you've got a total blockage. And just while we're talking about Dyson's and the fact that they suck fairly hard, there's a nice little lever here that if you do come and suck something and it starts to get caught up, you can pull that up and you release the suction or the most of the suction that's going on. Sure, the cheapies got it as well. It's that little feature that I think nearly every vacuum cleaner's got. All it does there, it opens up a little hole there and it releases some of the suction. But, um, you know, I think that was a really nice thing because there's nothing worse than vacuum cleaners that suck too hard, especially if you get, you're going over something like a um, mat and it starts to get all caught up. You just pull it up and the Dyson will release it. That's sort of weird after that clinging and banging and mucking around the rag suction thing. I found this thing hanging out. That's like the rear filter on this Audi machine. But what I'm going to do is going to retract the... And I'm struggling to get this thing back in. Uh, retract the cable because sometimes these cheapies have got nasty things to retract. Oh, pretty strong. Oh, yeah. Um, but this back filter thing uh, needs to be set back in place properly. And I'll probably need two hands to do it. Okay, let me explain the fate of this Aldi clone machine here. The canton lady up at my daughter's school uh, said to me, Leo, can I borrow your Dyson? So, sure. I lent her this for a few days. I also lent her my DC-59. The one she fell in love with was this one here. It's interesting, she's got a bit of a back problem and I thought maybe she would struggle with this one but she actually really liked it. She liked the way it was balanced and she brought it back to me. It was actually chock a block with, um, she's got cats and stuff. It was all full of fluff, fur hair and I think, you know, this one she loved but she struggled with the price as so many people do of Dyson. She'll get this for a year. I want her to use it normally. I want her to clean it normally as best as she can. And I'm pretty sure it's going to come back pretty ragtag. And then I'll do some destructive sucking with this thing. And I want to see this versus that in a bit of a destructive suck off in a year's time. But as a little reward for this lovely lady, who's the canteen lady up at my daughter's school, I will go off and buy her one of these machines as a thank you for helping me out with this video because I know this is the machine that she loves. But for her to claim the beautiful prize of that machine there, she's got to come in and do some dirty work with that machine there. I mean, Mr. Dyson, you know, he must be thinking, wow, look at that. People like the look of my machine so much, they're coming in and trying to emulate them. But I think what he's really protective of is if people try and replicate his little cyclones here. If there were cyclones in here, I'm pretty sure he would have come in and given this machine the chop. Well, I hope you learned something in this video. It can be a little bit dry talking about these machines, but hopefully I've showed you that, you know, it's always curious when there's a bit of a clone going on. Quite curious to see the fact that they've tried to mimic that shape there. And as always, up the end of my videos, I'm gonna say thanks for watching and bye for now. Fail Normally up the end of my videos, I do a fail reel, but in a funny way, what is on screen there is the fail. Nothing against the Aldi company, it's more about just cheap generic things that we go off and buy and we get snared by them. This person had, who had this one had it for one year, then it's out in the rubbish pit. Why? Because it doesn't suck, it loses suction, it's rubbish. This is fantastic for the Chinese economy because they keep pumping out this stuff, we keep buying it, we keep throwing it out. Mmm, where's that going to end up in the future, eh? Not a very good symbol for us, is it? On the same day I picked up this vacuum cleaner, and I actually toured my whole suburb and I thought I'll go around and, the, and my, my saying is it's very hard to find a Dyson out in the rubbish pits. You'll always find uh, items like that one there, the sheep and nasties. But lo and behold, on the day I went out looking for vacuum cleaners, I picked up a Dyson. And this is remarkable because it's in very good condition. It's a DC-05. I think this is about 12 to maybe 15 years old. I'm not exactly sure of the date on this one. I'll show you the little thing underneath. There's a little um, tag underneath and maybe someone can work it out. It's got some beautiful heads. I mean, the quality of this is what Dyson's all about. Remembering guys, this is old. This is an old machine. It still works. Uh, it's got all its little bits and bobs here. But what is interesting about the DC-05, you're thinking, well, Leo, if it still works and everything, why was it thrown out? There's one feature that this vacuum cleaner didn't key into and it wasn't until the DC-07. And that's the fact it hasn't got its root cyclones here. There is a big cone in the middle of this machine 
that does the separation or some separation of dust but the root cyclones which is the really tricky bit and the root cyclones on the Dysons are those pieces there that's the you know the big thing that Dysons have that the others don't have this machine was two versions before the root cyclones came in I think it was 2001 the DC 07 was the first machine to have those cyclones and that was the big breakthrough for Dyson well here's the info tag underneath this DC 05 and I think this might be 2000, the first 2002 there, but I'm not sure. Um, you know, it's that's the era. So even if it's 2002, this is a very old vacuum cleaner. And I guarantee to you, when this machine was a new one, it wouldn't have been a cheapie. But as I can see by looking over this, it's a really good quality build. And I think this is really important for me to understand as I'm trying to get my head around the Dyson product. It is an interesting cleaner for the sense that it's got a filter here. And of course it comes out and cleans the post motor filter is actually underneath here it's down the bottom here um, and it's got little you know things here no loss of suction blah 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 filters it's got a whole list of awards here I might have to do a separate little video on this machine but I've got to do some more research and understand about it and I'll probably pull it down and I'll show you that you know in essence it's a bit like a miniature version of the DC01 I think it was the second style vacuum cleaner of, of that barrels type that Dyson had done but then again I hope I'm right there I've just been looking at wiki pages and um, you know sometimes they're not totally correct I'll do anything to have a suck off challenge on my channel here there's the Aldi machine there one year old and thrown out in the heap because it doesn't suck here's the Dyson machine here what is it 10 12 years old someone will tell me whatever it is both of them still work we'll do this one here first listen to the noise it makes versus the suction making sure it's on full there on max that rag very carefully making a lot of noise but not doing much sucking let's turn the Dyson on it's down there he's moving around in there I love that here we go look at that I think that sort of says it all and uh, if you're gonna ever question the cost of a you know more expensive, more elaborate machine. Well, you're already fooling yourself, I dare say. Look at that, what's taken away from me? Thank you very much, Mr. Dyson. Personally, I learned a lot about these machines when I compared my just over a year old now Dyson DC35, which is actually a bit of an older model. I think it went DC35, DC44, which we don't have here, and this is a DC59 that Mr. Dyson most graciously sent out to me. But boy, I am glad that I've seen what this machine does and the performance that it can do. And I know for a fact that this thing here will totally outperform that. Totally outperform that. I know it outperforms that one. I bet you it outperforms that. And it's probably on par with that big machine at the back there. I think the revelation really in all this is here is a company and a person who seems to care about improving something that most people don't give much thought to. Sure you're paying top dollar for this but you're getting a top product I've learned that now what's also interesting with Dyson is you're getting some fantastic sales service and when I first spoke to the Dyson people I said hey Leah would you like us to come and overhaul your older machine I mean that's the way they work they've got excellent sales and service teams and in a sense that's what you get when you're buying a quality product you're not just buying the Dyson dream you're buying the Dyson sales and service as well I think Apple is sort of like that as well People like this, and just generic, I shouldn't, you know, I'm not landing on Aldi here, but it's the generic stuff here. It's all about sale, 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 cheap, 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 buy, buy, buy. And all you're doing is you're buying crap after crap. With this one here, you're buying a good purchase, and you're not getting caught up in that whole cycle of just chucking it out every couple of years. And that's been proven with that machine there. You know, we're learning a lot about Dyson in this video. But you know, back, I think back to when I was a kid, and we had Hoovers in the house, and it was funny that you called the vacuum cleaner the Hoover. What a luxury that is. Well, what I'm doing with my children is, when they call out for a machine like this, I say, Hey, Daddy, get the Dyson. That's what's said in our house. Okay, thanks very much for watching, and as a second cheerio, bye for now.